Hey there, folks. Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got a little mail. Hey, Santee. I'm still waiting for that video on the history in the oil lamp. George Wilson. We can do that. I'm not sure I can do a whole video on just oil lamps and keep my sanity. Therefore, this episode will focus on the most common lighting types in the era of westward expansion. Up until electricity was harnessed, we created light with fire. Even after electricity was utilized to power light bulbs, there were still plenty of places out west that didn't get the message until much later. Hey fellas, Amazon has got a big sale on electric light bulbs. They do? How about that? Ah, shoot! Hey, maybe we should get a couple of those. What the hell's a light bulb? Okay, so what kind of lighting did they have? Let's look. Candles were prevalent for hundreds of years, but they had their drawbacks. They're messy and they don't provide much light. Oil became the fuel to keep flames burning for a long time. It was typically animal fat, the most common being whale oil. In 1845, Abraham Gesner distilled coal down to a clear liquid and called it kerosene, after the Greek word for wax oil. He found that it produced a brighter yellower light than traditional oil. By the Civil War, kerosene was being produced from petroleum, which made it more affordable, and it had pretty much swept the country as a lighting fuel. Sure, candles were still being mass-produced, but, as discussed, they were not as versatile. What am I to do with it? Just light it. The lamp was a unique design. It started with a base of glass or metal that contained the fuel. <laughs> On it was a burner, a device that held the cotton wick and allowed for adjustment and airflow. More wick, more light, less wick, less light. You get the idea. Set in the burner was a chimney, a glass tube or bowl that distributed the light. If the lamp was fixed to a wall, it might have a reflector plate on it to bounce the light out. Shades could be placed over the glass to direct light, like today. The Dietz Lantern was developed in 1853 especially for kerosene. When we think of the Old West, it's probably the most recognizable. It could burn for up to 11 hours before having to refill it. It was perfect for all weather, as the enclosure protected the flame from going out. This design was embraced by railroad workers and anyone who needed mobility in the lighting department. Gas was another fuel source. Although it had been around as far back as 4th century China, the industrial era really brought about its widespread use. Gas was not fun to employ, however. It required pipe installation and buildings had to be basically refitted to use it. It did offer the ability to light an entire street quickly and evenly. Out west, it was mainly found in bigger cities and industrial areas. Yes, Miss O'Leary, I'm just gonna have a smoke first. No, not at all what happened. An interesting one was called the Moonlight Tower, or simply Moon Tower, which was an electric arc light placed on a tall structure to illuminate a large metropolitan area. These saw use in a couple of Old West cities like Austin and San Jose before electric streetlights became the norm. Incidentally, Austin refurbished theirs and still uses it today. Western movies and video games are doing a great job of really giving you the feel of how dim interior settings were back then. Lighting in the Old West. Well, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. Project, that's my line!